Creating a sales invoice in Xero is very straightforward. I'm going to the Accounts tab and selecting Sales. And then I click on the New button. And I just need to fill in the fields of this template to create my invoice. So I need to put in here um, who this invoice is for. If it's a new client, I'll need to type the whole name of the client. If it's a client I've used, I've sold to before, as I start typing in the name, it will appear in the drop down underneath the field and I select. I move on to the date. I can tab through this date and today's date will be put in there. I can type the date with dots between the numbers or I can type the date with a forward slash between the numbers or I can select from the drop down calendar but I'm going to tab through. Now the due date, if any defaults have been set up, they will automatically appear here. I can type in a due date in however format I in whichever format I wish. I can choose it from the drop down calendar or I can put plus however many days it is to its due. So I can say plus 30 and zero will put the date in for me. The invoice number is selected from as the next invoice number in the in a sequential listing. Um, I can override this, but Zero will keep coming back to the number that I've missed out. And then the reference box is a free type box. I can type anything in there that I want to, or I can just leave that blank. Then the branding is, this is the default branding that we've already set up um, in our settings. If we want to choose a different of our branding themes, we can from the drop down. And then we have the paper icon with the corner turned down, which means we can upload digital files either from our file library or direct to this sales invoice um, to attach it to this template. I'm using the premium version of Xero, which means I can set up multiple multi-currencies. Um, if you have a standard version, you don't have this option. And I'm going to cal calculate my invoice with the amounts being tax exclusive or VAT exclusive. But I can amend that as well if I want to put in the prices of VAT inclusive. Then I've got the lines to fill in. I can choose um, one of my items from my inventory items and the line will be filled in um, of, of whatever I've put in in the inventory items. I can override any of these if it's different or I can use each line to free type in exactly what I want. I can put um, box of golf tees. Again, and then I can choose the account that I want this to be allocated to. If I've only got one sales account, I can put that in here. I can choose my account if by um, typing in the number, if I know the number, or I can just start typing sales, or I can choose from the drop down um, from my, which will list all my accounts in my chart of accounts, but it is just sales. If I have tracking options set up, I can choose um, one of the, the, the options from my tracking categories. I can say they're both east side and I'm David. <laughs> I can also use any of these lines as a description. So I can say as discussed on the phone. And I don't have to fill in any of the rest of the lines. I can have as many lines as I wish. When, it's, when I've checked that everything's correct, so this is my subtotal, Zero has worked out the VAT, so it's added VAT onto these figures because this is tax exclusive. And then I can choose to save this as a draft, which means I, it's not gone to the reports, or I can save it as an approved invoice and it does go through to all the reports. I can now email this out to my customer. Um, I can print it, print this PDF invoice out and actually put it in an envelope and post it if I want to as well. If I email it, 
I have um, an email template which I can change anything on here if I want to. We'll have an online invoice link in there as well. And if I want the PDF to be attached to the email as well, so they've got the option of looking at it long online or opening up the PDF, I can do that. I can also have a copy sent to me if I want to have it sent to me as well as a record of it being sent um, and it appears in my own inbox. And I can send that out to the to my customer. Once an invoice has been approved, I do have some options. So I from this invoice, I can edit this if any of these details are incorrect. I can void this invoice if I want to. Um, you can still track this invoice um, in your audit trail, which means if you listed all your invoices, it would still be there, but with a big red voided next to it. Um, some accountants would not like you to do uh, void your invoices. They would want you to credit the invoice um, in full to, to, in effect, void it. So check with your accountant first if they agree to you to voiding invoices. I could copy this invoice so that to reduce typing on my next one, if I was going to send Bayside Club a very similar invoice, I could copy this and make any amendments that I wish to as well. I could turn this into a template for a repeating invoice, which means I could set this up so Zero would automatically create this invoice however often I wished it to be created. And I can add a credit note to this to be attached to this invoice if I want to as well. Now I would normally, um, if I was uploading my bank statements or having my bank statements fed into my Xero, I would probably match the payment off from the reconciliation screen. But if I wanted to, ma to mark the invoice as paid manually, I can fill out these boxes at the bottom here and add the payment. Then when I do the reconciliation, I'll just be matching that payment up to the statement line. Underneath here, Zero automatically creates a trail so we can see who created the invoice, who approved the invoice. If I did make any edits, it would say I'd edited the invoice, but it wouldn't give many details. So you can add your own notes if you want to explain why you've done certain things to this invoice as well.